today we will be talking about microcirculation, right. Microcirculation includes the smallest vessels, right, between the arterial tree and the venous tree. If we really start, uh, put the microcirculation into proper perspective, we should draw the right heart and left heart both. Let's suppose here is right heart, which is supposed to collect the blood from all the body. And here is your left heart. Now what really happens, that all the venous blood which is coming back through superior vena cava, superior vena cava and inferior vena cava going to the right atrium and then to the right ventricle, it is eventually pumped into pulmonary circulation. In the pulmonary circulation, in the pul this is the air spaces, in the pulmonary circulation, these are the pulmonary arteries, these are pulmonary arteries, uh, which break down into pulmonary, yes, these are pulmonary capillaries and eventually oxygenated blood from the pulmonary capillaries is going to the left heart and that is pulmonary, yeah, these are pulmonary veins. Here are your pulmonary arteries and here are your pulmonary capillaries. Now pulmonary capillary bed is the microcirculation in the lungs or microcirculation of pulmonary system. So pulmonary capillaries, right, this is the part of the microcirculation which is present between the right heart and the left heart. Then all of you know that from the left heart, blood through the aortic system is supplied to the all body, right. Out of it, as you know, the branches will come out as arterial tree, right, and eventually they will divide into first the arteries, then arteries will divide into, yes, arterioles, then arterioles will further divide into, no, first meta-arterioles, arteries, then arterioles, then these are meta-arterioles, and meta-arterioles, right, they will break down into capillary networks, right, and these capillary network will of course collect into venules and these venules eventually drain into veins and in the end they are responsible to take the blood from here back to the right heart. So what we can say that between the right heart and the left heart we have pulmonary microcirculation and between the left heart and the right heart we are having between the arterial systemic arterial tree and systemic venous tree we are having capillaries, systemic, systemic capillaries or we simply call it systemic microcirculation. In this diagram, one component of microcirculation is missing, who will tell me? I have shown you there are arteries, then arterioles, then meta-arterioles. Meta-arterioles break down into capillaries, is that right? And capillaries collect into venules and then veins and going back. In this diagram, one extremely important component of microcirculation is missing. Who is going to tell me? Raul, do you have any idea? Yes. The renal? No, no. Uh, Look, this microcirculation is present in every tissue. Some is, some of it is passing through GIT, other is passing through the renal, still some microcirculation passing through muscles. It is just representative of one microcirculatory bed. This is representative of one microcirculatory bed. We are just showing this is any tissue in the body. This, this tissue, listen, this tissue may be a muscle or it may be a brain or it may be bone or it may be kidney or it may be liver. But it has arterial input and venous output. In between arterial input and venous output, there is microcirculation. Is that right? Yes. Now, we have just started microcirculation. So I am asking that in this diagram, something extremely important is missing. So I want you to tell me what is the important component of microcirculation which is missing here. I will give you an idea, hint, that if that my part of microcirculation is blocked, you develop edema. Please tell me something called lymphatics. Lymphatics. It's very sad if you don't remember it. Lymphatics from every tissue, they are responsible to take the lymph back which will eventually drain into major veins. You know, thoracic duct drain into uh, major veins, right? Mm -hmm. So what really happens? The, in a typical tissue, input is arterial, 
input of is arterial but output is double. There is venous output and lymphatic output. What really happens, students always remember venous and I don't know why most of them forget the lymphatic output. So when we are dealing with the microcirculation, we must talk about arterioles and associated capillaries and venules and with that we should never forget to talk about lymphatics. Is that right? Is it clear? Now, what I'm going to discuss, what is the major function of microcirculation? Yes, Victor, what is the function of micro, microcirculation? What it is doing in the body? Exchange. Yes, exchange. For example, these are the cells of this particular tissue, right? These are the cells of this tissue, typical tissue which I have drawn there. Now, what is happening? That from here, fluid is moving out from arterial end of capillary. This is the arterial end of the capillary and this is the venous end of capillary. From arterial end of capillary, fluid is coming out, washing the cells, providing the cells with nutrition and removing their waste products. And this side, what is happening that this is the venous end of the capillaries. From arterial end of the capillaries, fluid is coming out, providing the tissues with the nutrition and other necessary substances. And from venous end of the capillaries, fluid is going back, re-entering. So we can say from all the microcirculation, fluid is all the time oozing out into interstitial area and going back from the interstitial to the where venous system. And some of the fluid and especially some proteins which leak out, they cannot be taken back. They are drained by lymphatics. They are drained by lymphatics, right? Now microcirculation by definition consists of vascular channels which are only one cell thick. That is, they are having endothelial cells over here. This is an endothelial cell, then there is another endothelial cell, and so and so forth. So microcirculation has capillaries, and these capillaries are having, what are these? Okay, I remove this part for convenience. So these are which cells? Endothelial cells. Now, again, in this diagram of microcirculation, in the structure of capillary, something is missing here. What is that thing? What is the classical structure of a capillary? Histology. Classic structure of a capillary. Okay, I'm making capillary here. These are endothelial cells. And here is also line of endothelial, yes please, cells. This, in this structure, something extremely important is missing. Yeah, basement membrane, excellent. So basement membrane is around that. Now, main permeability factors that what will come out from circulation into interstitial area and what can go back. This is determined by, that is determined by mainly by endothelial thing or by the basement membrane. First we have to talk about these two things. What do you think? Mostly endothelial cells are more permeable or basement membrane is more permeable? So which is more permeable? Yeah. Okay, my question is anything which want to move across this membrane, capillary membrane, which consists of uh, endothelial cell resting on the basement membrane, uh, what is the real barrier? Real barrier is endothelial cell or real barrier is basement membrane? Basement membrane? Yeah, what is the real barrier? Real barrier mean, uh, if for example, Mr. Victor, you happen to be here, you want to come out, the real trouble will be to pass through yeah, the endothelial, endothelial system or real trouble will be to pass through the basement membrane. Yes, yes please. The real barrier is? I say the endothelial. Yes, endothelial area. The reason, it is the real barrier is endothelial area, not this. Basement membrane is just crisscross of highly porous. Basement membrane is highly porous. It is a crisscross of collagen and other connective tissue components. But basement membrane lets the things move relatively easily. Is that right? So the real barrier is provided by the endothelial cell. In this case, is that right? For the capillary, the basement membrane, does it have a charge on it? Is it, is yeah, it does have. It does have. Uh, the, but this charge is more important when we talk about the glomerular basement membrane, right? Because that general generally, okay. generally, connective tissue has everywhere somewhat negative charge, okay. right? Now, 
another question. When we talk about microcirculation, we talk about there are blood-brain barrier, right? Yes. And we talk about that there are some capillary beds which are more leaky, and there are some capillary beds which are normally less leaky, right? Why? For example, we talk about that most of just a minute. I'm talking about the capillary bed. Some of them are least leaky, and some of them are normally physiologically more leaky. What is the reason? Yes. Number one, somewhere capillaries are sinusoidal. Sinusoidal capillaries. And somewhere we say they're fenestrated capillaries. Fenestrated capillaries. I want to know the difference in them. What is the difference? Sinusoidal capillaries are also more leaky capillaries. Fenestrated capillaries are also more leaky capillaries. More leaky. Uh, things leak. Right. Now the question is that how the sinusoidal bed and fenestrated bed is different. For example, the capillaries which are passing through the liver, they are sinusoid. The microcirculation of liver is called hepatic sinusoids. All of you have heard of it. But the microcirculation in glomeruli, we say it, it has fenestrated capillaries. In glomerular tuft, the capillaries are called fenestrated capillaries. I want to know about the microcirculation, very fundamental concept, that what is the difference in sinusoidal capillaries and fenestrated capillaries? If someone knows, yes, Rahul, you want to tell me. At least tell me spellings are different. Yes? Sinusoids are like, a ca uh, like more like a cavity-like, and fenestrated is like porous-like. OK, but uh, let me make it more clear. Maybe you are right. Listen, the real difference is, if I make sinusoidal capillaries, they are having endothelial cells with very big interendothelial gap. They are very big interendothelial gaps. So this type of capillaries are called sinusoids. And usually they are wider. But they are very, very, and the basement membrane is also not very effectively present. These are sinusoids. But when we should talk about glomerular capillaries, uh, do you think glomerular capillaries, of course, they produce a lot of filtration. They are having such big gaps or they do not have? No, they have small, the gaps are smaller. No, I'm talking about these gaps, interendothelial gaps. In they are not there. They are very less. Actually, glomerular capillaries, if I draw here, you'll be surprised that endothelial cells are having minimal gaps in between. Then the question is that, how you can produce so much filtration? Answer is, these capillary cells are porous. The capillary cells are porous, right? Endothelial cells are porous, and not the endothelial, interendothelial gap. So when you have highly porous endothelial cells lining a capillary, we call it fenestrated capillary. When there are fenestrations present in endothelial cells, right? So when we say a particular microcirculation is fenestrated microcirculation, it means the endothelial cells which are lining that microcirculation, those endothelial cells are having multiple porous areas. So these are intracellular, not intercellular. These are intracellular porous areas. But when we talk about sinusoids, these are not in, inside the cells. The pores are in between the cells, right? So, yeah, interendothelial gaps are there, right? Anyway, one, there is one microcirculation in our body which is really very, very tight, where endothelial cells, there is one microcirculation in our body, and in this case, that particular tissue, suppose that microcirculation is here, and in that tissue, in microcirculation, they are very, very, cells are held together very tightly, and very few things can really leak out through interendothelial gaps. Can you tell me? What is this vascular uh, uh, microcirculation? What is this microcirculation? I'm talking about microcirculation, that there is some microcirculation in your body through which, in, in which interendothelial gaps are really sealed up tightly. Yes, blood brain barrier. Write it down, cerebral microcirculation. So now we can say, look, hepatic, this is, what is this? Hepatic microcirculation is sinusoidal. And glomerular microcirculation is? Fenestrated. And 
cerebral microcirculation is tight junctions yes they are tight and very few things leak out 